share my PowerPoint and begin the talk. Um, a minute. Thank you again um, so much for, for this opportunity and for um, the chance to talk a bit about the work we're doing at IBM Research. Um, and in particular, we're looking at um, talking to the technical community about how we build um, AI that we can trust, how we build AI that tackles um, and overcomes issues such as bias, um, limitations of transparency, et cetera. So I'm Tabi and I manage our AI and quantum research um, at IBM Research here in South Africa, Johannesburg. And um, part of the, the, the presentation I'm going to give today is work that comes across IBM Research, not only in South Africa, but across the world. As you know, um, some of you that we have labs, IBM Research laboratories around the world um, um, in different continents. So I'm going to present our perspectives and our, our view of you know, what it means to build AI that we can trust, what it means for us to trust AI, and also provide some resources that would be beneficial for the technical community, um, but also share some of the work that we're doing at IBM that can be immediately leveraged by um, other people wanting to build um, um, trustworthy AI systems. So I guess, I mean, one thing that's, uh, that's very clear is that more and more we're seeing um, AI powering more and more critical workflows um, across different sectors from banking, government, legal, healthcare, um, and in several other, other domains, as we all know. And therefore, it becomes more and more critical and essential that we focus on trust, we focus on uh, from the inside out, how do we build AI that is trustworthy? So um, the, one of the key questions then is what will it take? What does it take to say that um, um, the AI that we build, the AI that we deploy, that we sell to customers um, is trustworthy? And I'll speak of four principles um, and uh, in detail, I'll get into each of them. But we're speaking about fairness and, 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 and avoiding bias within AI. We're looking at explainable AI. Um, we're looking at safe and robust AI, as well as the transparent, um, you know, um, use of data, as well as the transparent application of AI of AI systems. And one aspect I won't touch on at all in this hall is the the section here on stakeholder communities, um, because we we believe that you know it takes more than just um, the core technical teams or the core developer communities to make AI trustworthy. And um, as much as I will only talk about the technical aspects of how we build trustworthy AI, it's important to always reiterate how um, you know the the bulk of the work sits in the broader community, um, including you know. You know, policymakers, um, in, including um, different um, levels of engagement across across borders, across nations, etc. So, um, I will begin with um, the key questions again, just reinforcing what I just said last. In terms of when we say we have built an AI system that is trustworthy, the key questions are: Is it fair? Um, is it easy to understand? Is it transparent? Um, um, and I'll explain what all of these things mean. Is it accountable? And importantly also, this is the, 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 the point of robustness. Did anyone tamper with it? Is it safe um, um, for use? Um, is, it, is, a, is, it a, is it a tag, is, is it a tag proof and so on? Okay, so let's start with uh, the most common topic when we speak of fairness in AI, which is the, the topic of fairness and, 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 and bias. And I think when we started um, as a research, um, I mean, as a global uh, te technical community to realize the, the, the challenges with AI, uh, one of the first um, issues that came out was that of fairness. And some of the early examples that many of you may remember were, for example, the facial recognition um, systems um, a couple of years ago, where they were immediately, you know, it became apparent that um, some of the, the facial recognition systems, even those that were being used in practice and in, um, you know, um, 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 in, in production in some really critical, um, um, you know, domains uh, were not trained um, in, um, in data that, that was representative of, you know, the, um, the general population, basically then um, it wasn't fair to people of, you know, certain, um, you know, uh, uh, facial features as an example, or perhaps people of a certain tone, and most of that was linked to the quality of, of the training data. My bad. Um, I don't know. Oh, sorry. Um, so, but it, it goes beyond that now we're beginning to realize that sometimes, you know, the, the, the question of is the system fair 
it 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 it, it can even go to um, about not only in the training but also in the way that it is deprived. As you can see from this first image here, is um, um, a system is unfair if you know um, it can please a certain group or um, a, a certain type of, of of user at a systematic advantage or disadvantage um, over another. And uh, as we know, you know the, the other big question is about imbalanced reading data, non-representative data, um, um, uh, incorrect deployment, etc. So these are things that we have to think about when we train when we, we deploy uh, and when we continue to use AI systems um, in practice. Um, another sort of key question on, on the question of bias is, it goes beyond the data. You could, you, as, as I was showing that, there are components of how AI systems are deployed as well. Um, another interesting issue is the fact that even into evaluation of the systems, um, bias can creep in. And here it happens mostly because as humans, we all know we are inherently biased um, because of our, our upbringing, because of the environment that we've been exposed to, because of our culture, etc. So we, we as humans carry a, a, a certain influence, a certain bias within us. And that, that bias can creep into the, into the way we evaluate AI systems. So it's absolutely critical that, uh, uh, you know, even with seemingly complete and representative data, that we pay attention to our own human biases in creating data sets, in, in evaluating those data sets, as well as in evaluating um, the fairness of the systems that, that we deploy. So um, these are some resources that I'll just touch upon quickly that anyone want can go on and look at. There's quite a lot of research um, that, that is going on and some of the, the outputs of this research are immediately usable. A, a, an example is this, is this particular paper here that presents a data scientist's guide to um, discrimination aware classification. So if you're working on a classification task, for example, um, this, this, this is a very good um, guide into you know, um, developing a discrimination aware or a more, a more fair um, classification algorithm. Um, another one, this is um, currently, it's, a, it's an online textbook on fairness and machine learning. It is, it is still being developed further, um, but it's quite a good resource as well for people working in the technical um, uh, you know, uh, building of AI to, to look into. Um, and it's, it's a, 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 it covers a number of, of topics that uh, are worth looking at if one wants to you know, pay attention to the fairness of, of the machine learning work that they do. Um, in addition, then from IBM Research specifically, um, a couple of years ago, IBM Research released a toolkit. Uh, it's an open source toolkit called AI Fairness 360. That's the URL. It's, uh, it's, it's available um, um, globally. Um, it, it includes, uh, you know, tutorials, demos, examples of, you know, for different types of data, for different types of machine learning algorithms, right? Looking at, in practice, how do we actually, you know, um, um, uh, um, apply the, 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 the principles of fairness. Um, it, it, it includes, you know, um, uh, content on metrics, uh, over 70 metrics of how to, you know, determine the fairness of, of, um, of a machine learning model. And it, it includes um, tutorials that, that show how to mitigate bias in different types of, um, of AI applications. And um, for those of you um, that are also working on um, sort of uh, production uh, AI systems as well, there are several products uh, that IBM has. As an example, um, IBM uh, Watson Open Scale. This is a, a product that um, is available for IBM clients to use to plan and, uh, and train the AI models. And it gives the developer visibility into every step of, of the AI development life cycle. But importantly, it incorporates then within this planning and this, and this development, uh, questions of how to incorporate uh, fairness. So uh, I believe using tools like this, then you know, it, it gives um, more and more resources into the hands of, 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 of AI developers to make sure that you know, they think about um, uh, fairness in, even in, during the time of, of development. And so I'll move on quickly to the second uh, pillar beyond the first one having been um, fairness and, um, and, and mitigating bias. And the second is to, in order to build AI systems that we can trust, um, it requires accurate and understandable evidence. Um, the AI has to be explainable. And, and, and I'll give an example. If a doctor 
um, is using an AI system in a hospital, right? And it, uh, the, the system recommends a treatment plan. The doctor wants to understand why that treatment uh, was recommended for, for, for their patient, right? They don't just want to know the, the answer or the recommendation because they need to know, they need to trust it. And the way to trust it is, is, is when you know how it has been formulated. Um, similarly, if, if you know, a customer goes to a bank to apply for a loan and the loan is denied and such a decision is made by, um, by a machine, then, I mean, for the customer, it, it doesn't, um, it, it, they can't trust that decision unless they understand um, the way in which this particular system, this intelligent system has made such a, such, um, a decision. And it goes all the way to, for example, in the classroom as well. Um, if, if teachers will be evaluated using AI systems, if AI systems will be used to create students, et cetera, the teachers, the students want to know how and why um, AI systems are recommending, advising, uh, predicting the way that they do. And it goes along in, in, in almost all the domains and sectors where AI can be um, applied and deployed. So again, looking at what can people do right, to ensure that the AI they build is explainable. Um, one of the things is that with, uh, with AI, it tends to be tempting to um, look at the primary metric of success as accuracy, right? as developing systems that work, developing AI that does what it's supposed to do. And often that means you know, using black box deep learning models. Sometimes that means using transformer models because they are the best for the task. And sometimes there's challenges like limited data. And then, you know, then the, the solution is to find whatever architecture will work for that particular context. And, and, and we acknowledge that all of this is true. However, um, then there has to be an extra deliberate step of thinking about no matter what data set we're using, the size of the data set um, or the type of architecture or machine learning approach that is being used, how do we incorporate explainability, right? Sorry, how do we incorporate explainability into, into the model? And uh, again, IBM Research has released uh, another open source toolkit. This one is called AI Explainability 360. And it is a resource that helps developers and data scientists to, 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 to include a capability for diverse explanations into um, the models that they develop. Similarly, this one also, it has demos, uh, you know, these uh, papers that, that describe the basic concepts of explainability, as well as live tutorials that one can look at uh, and sort of examples of actual models that had explainability embedded within them. Now, um, another, another example also of, you know, an IBM product that supports um, a step of explainability in the model development. Um, open scale as well, it allows the model developer to, 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 to incorporate aspects of explainability into their, uh, uh, their model development. Now, going to the third dimension of what does it take to have AI that we can trust? Then the third dimension here is um, AI, it has to be ethically bounded. We have to feel safe that this AI cannot be tampered with. Um, one of the you know, clearest and maybe funniest examples of you know, a non-robust um, you know, um, AI uh, a, a, a system happened a couple of, 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 of years ago um, in 2018 when um, some ill, um, you know, ill-intentioned group of people wanted to throw an internet joke of, you know, um, uh, associating the wet idiot with ex-president uh, Donald Trump in the United States. And what they did is they went to sites like um, Reddit and other sites that you know uh, are populated mostly with user-generated user content, and they uploaded multiple photos of Donald Trump, attaching the word "idiot" in as a caption in in all of these images. What then happened was that uh, then you know the, the Google search algorithm at the time um, then picked up this content that was populating across the web, and if you went to Google Images and searched the word "idiot." then immediately you would get all the top results as photos of President Donald Trump. That's an example of, you know, um, at the time, you know, a, 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 a limitation of a system, limitation of an algorithm that got 
um, uh, 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 fooled by, um, by, by the protesters in this case. Many of the AI algorithms that are in production now um, are very, very safe against these types of, these types of attacks that from you know, ill-intentioned Ill um, individuals. But um, we need to make sure that the system we build are safe from those types of attacks, from being fooled in terms of the data that we use to, um, to, um, to train and, uh, and uh, uh, give results from the AI systems. So this is an example of, um, again, why we must question ourselves about the validity of especially user-generated content when it is being used as training data. Many of us use Twitter data, for example, to make decisions to understand different phenomena. And it's extremely important that we know and understand that it's possible for Twitter users to, to you know, to, to, um, you know uh, maliciously um, you know, uh, put, put a certain um, narrative in, in that trends of tweets. And unless there are, there are you know, um, ways that are, uh, are build the robustness um, uh, steps, then um, the AI systems we build or, or, or train on that data are inherently flawed. Um, the second thing is beyond um, flawed data that is falsified by humans. There's also, you know, the possibility of, um, you know, uh, bots, you know, or, or the, the models or the AI algorithms um, um, being exploited in other ways. Um, and we need to make sure that all of that uh, are, are, are protected, especially for systems that are deployed for, for public human use. So um, then the, again, if you look at another toolkit that I've been research, I uh, was working on, this is called the, Ad the Adversarial Robustness Toolkit. And this one is in particular is looking at how do we begin to look at adversarial machine learning? How do we begin to build robust machine learning algorithms such that then the systems we build are, are protected from different types of attacks? There's several. Um, and you can sort of look at, if you go into this particular toolkit, you can look at um, you know, the different, uh, I don't know why this keeps advancing themselves. You can sort of look at the different um, uh, uh, approaches, the different techniques that uh, uh, and the best methods that are included. Uh, there's lots of papers, examples again, and also um, tutorials that one can follow. So the, the fourth dimension now, uh, remember I spoke first about you know fair and trans uh, fair fair um, fair and unbiased AI. I talked about explainable AI. I spoke about um, safe and robust AI. Then the fourth the fourth aspect that IBM Research is pushing for is that of transparency. Okay, so explainability is one thing. We want to make sure that if needed, right, we can give an explanation of the of the algorithm. But um, another dimension to that is we should be transparent about it. It's one thing for the explanation to exist, but we should actually be transparent about communicating that that you know that inner working um, mechanism of the AI or the machine learning algorithm to the users or to whomever will be the uh, the consumer of of the systems that we build or train using AI. If you think of you know um, as an example in the, the food industry. Um, the food manufacturers are, 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 are required to produce or be transparent about the ingredients and the health um, um, nutritional effects of the food that they produce. If you think of um, energy, I mean, um, electronic and appliance producers, they also have to be accountable about the energy use of the appliances they produce. If you think of pharmaceuticals, right? Every medication you buy, it comes with um, detailed information about the drug, et cetera, about the risks associated with using the drug, as an example, about guidelines for use, about possible side effects around the, you know, the composition and the active ingredients and all of those things, the interactions that can be expected from said drug. Similarly, looking at how integral I, um, AI is coming to be in, the, you know, in our personal lives, you know, in our places of work, our places of business, et cetera, it is increasingly important that we as, as AI producers develop what we as IBM are choosing to call fact sheets, where we actually declare the conformity of our AI systems to, you know, fair, ethical and responsible AI, but also where we, we communicate um, the inner workings or the most critical information and warnings, if applicable, of the systems that, that we produce. So this is a, there's a great paper, the one that I've 
included here that sort of speaks to um, the initial argument for why this is important and why we think it's something that in different formats, of course, um, companies and, and, um, and different groups should try to imbibe. So again, if you think of, um, you know, the fact sheets of um, a complete AI or a system or a system with AI components at some point, um, the facts will come from different levels of, of, of the, 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 the system production. Everything starting from the business owner, the data scientist, the software developer, each of these levels, they in, inject a certain level of um, you know, um, mechanism into the product. And it should be clear to the end user um, what, what, what is inside um, uh, or, or what is um, the core functionality um, of, of the product in, in, in as much as it's, it's likely possible, but importantly to, to describe the conformity of, of the product to, as I said, principles and, um, and, and uh, you know, uh, the, the, the elements of fair and, and, uh, uh, and, and, and ethical AI. I think I've already spoken a lot about this in terms of the, the, the fact sheets includes, um, you know, um, input from different, um, you know, individuals in, um, in the product life cycle. So uh, again, this is a, a, the last uh, uh, toolkit that uh, we're introducing from IBM Research. So for each of these four principles, IBM Research is working actively to ensure that we have toolkits that the public can use um, and they can refer to, uh, they can see examples of, of how these principles are in practice um, applicable um, in, a, in a real life, like in a live um, uh, 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 AI um, uh, development um, 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 uh, situation. So if you look at the AI factors 360, similarly, you will find um, some papers that describe what we mean by fact sheets and why this is important and why more people should actually look into adopt this, this, this type of um, you know, transparent communication of, of AI, um, as well as there are some examples uh, of different uh, types of uh, machine learning algorithms and seeing how um, these examples include some fact sheets that we think are useful to accompany um, um, a system or a model depending on where it is deployed. And so as I conclude, um, I think I've spoken about the, the four principles to say what it means to build AI that is trustworthy. Um, and for each, I've sort of provided some resources from IBM Research that anyone can, can use and even contribute to um, if possible uh, or desirable. And the first is AI should be fair and unbiased. AI should be explainable, right? Um, and AI should be safe and robust. And in deploying and using AI systems, we have to be transparent around what they are and, and how they actually work. And all of these four things we should be doing um, with the understanding that even if it means delaying a project, we need to pay attention to, um, to, this, to these four principles. Even if it means you know, not taking the shortest route to the highest accuracy um, of the machine learning model, these four principles are what will ensure that AI becomes trustworthy. The systems we build and deploy are trustworthy um, by our customers um, and, and the users um, in different contexts. So thank you very much. Um, I think that is the, the end. I have included here uh, my email address if anyone would like to come in contact with me. But yeah, thank you very, very much.